All right, today we are going to be working on exercise two, um, coloring a line art coloring book from an old Star Wars coloring book. So we've got our choice of the Tauntaun and Luke Skywalker, and we have R2-D2, and then we have probably my favorite, Hoth, the ad uh, adits. So we will choose one of these, and we're going to go through making selections and coloring those selections and then doing some clipping masks um, using a lot of layers and building on what we've already started to do with um, some of the brush tools and um, also the layer panel. So which one do you guys want to do? Okay, that's what we'll do. Let's open that file by dragging it over the PS in the bottom of the dock. If the PS icon for Photoshop is not in your dock, all you have to do is go in the finder, go applications and it will be listed there. Let's wait for that to get loaded. Excellent. All right, so we need to prepare this file. There's a couple of different kinds of selections and the kinds of selections that we're going to work with primarily work very well in a high contrast area. So we're going to set this file up by first adding an adjustment layer to increase the contrast um, and then working with different selections from there. First thing I like to do always is duplicate the background copy. You can do that with layer, duplicate layer, drag this down to here, or right click. There you go. It's a good way to set it up. Now, your selection tools are located over in this part of the toolbar. You've got your geometric selections, right, like the rectangular marquee. I'm going to command plus, which is not kind of that great for selecting things like this. You have the elliptical marquee under it, which might be okay if you, you know, got that right, but still, it's not maybe the best selection tool. You'll find that there's a, a selection tool for everything, and they all do something a little different. You may actually work with them in uh, combination. Then we've got the lasso, which is a freehand selection tool. So if I want to select this, I have to be able to draw that. That actually was shockingly good and not typical of how I usually make <laughs> selections. Um, Command D to deselect that. If I had to select something like this with this tool, it would kind of probably not go as smoothly. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command D to deselect, and let's see what other options we have nested here. We have the polygonal lasso tool. This tool is one of my favorites because um, you can click, and you'll see it'll draw kind of a straight line. Click to set a point. Click, click, and then you see that circle? That's not the little circle that's next to the cursor. That says, I am going to finish and make that beautiful selection. So that works perfect for something like this, not maybe so perfect for something like that. Okay? So again, it, it, and then this will happen too. You'll accident, and then you'll be like, I can't. It will go like this for hours, so you can't stop it. So give into it, double click to stop it, and then command D to deselect. We also have the magnetic lasso tool, which might be a good combination for things that are round as opposed to more geometric. So you can click to lay down points, but notice how it's letting you be a little more organic with it, and it's kind of helping you out. The circle says, hey, I'm going to finish the selection, and that's not too bad. So this is a good combination here. Unless you have got a really steady hand and then the lasso tool, you can draw them all. You can hit command D. And then we've got the quick select tool, which I absolutely love. This is this tool kind of blows my mind. <laughs> I just clicked on it. That's all I did. And it selected this gigantic area. But say I want to select this area also. What I'm going to do is hold on the shift key and watch what happens is it allows me to add to that selection. And I can continue to click, and it will allow me to add to the selection. 
Now it's picking up things I don't want it to pick up. It's not really paying attention to that black line. And we're gonna fix that by making this a much more high contrast file and really defining those edges. Okay. But the quick select is a great tool and you literally just kind of click, click and drag, click and drag. Okay. If, you are, if you make a selection and it pull, say it gets a little bit too much, the option key see this uh, minus in front of it, the option key is how you can subtract from the selection. Okay. So shift is how you add to a selection, and option or alt is how you subtract. Good. And then we also have your magic wand, which is great if you are selecting color-based selections. Just bam. And once this is more high contrast, you won't have problems with it not picking up little bits like this. The magic wand has something kind of cool called a tolerance. And if I take that tolerance down to like three or four and I click, you'll notice it's going to select the pixel that I selected and then four up in value, four down in value. If I hold, put this up to like 127, it's just like, I'm just gonna select, you know, lots and lots of values. So I like to keep this kind of low, closer to the default uh, when I'm working. When you're using the magic wand, make sure, in our case, since we're going to be using layers, to sample all layers. Or if you have a blank layer, which we're going to be using for color, this is what will happen. And you'll say, nothing's working. Well, you just selected the entire, you selected everything that's on that layer, which is nothing. All right. If something is ever not working in life or in Photoshop, hit Command D, deselect. Because you may have one pixel selected somewhere that you can't see and it's slowing everything down. So I like to hit sample all layers. All right, sound good so far? Just kind of a quick run through of your selection tools which are up here. You've also got a select menu and we're gonna go through um, how to refine some things and how to grow and adjust our selections once we've made them. But let's start with the basic. First thing we need to do is get this to be a high contrast image. It's gonna look better overall and make our selections much easier. Now I want to make a levels layer. This is a histogram. And a histogram is a visual representation of all of the values on your image. As you can see, there are no true blacks in this image. So I'm going to take this black triangle and I'm going to set the first black here where actually pixels are. This is called pixel wasteland right here where there's nothing. Now there are whites, but because I want it to just be black and white, I am gonna bring that in. If you were editing a photograph, you wouldn't do it quite like this. You wouldn't like um, truncate part of the histogram, but because I know what I want, which is just black and white, I can play around with this. It's gonna make the selections easier. It's gonna make the whole thing look a lot cooler. Now. I don't want that above my color, or if I pick a blue like this and I start coloring with it, it's gonna be really weird because it's underneath the levels. So I want the levels to be above the background copy. And you can see how different that color is when it's not under the levels. It's gonna be much easier to paint what you see and have it to be, uh, for it to be what you get, okay? All right, so let's review that real quick erase that. I got this levels layer on the first row of the adjustment panel. So in the adjustment panel, these will change um, the contrast. I typically don't use brightness and contrast. I don't think it has enough control, uh, like the levels or the con uh, curves to get to this point. Um, if you want to change a color later, you can use hue saturation, color balance, black and white. And then these are kind of the special effects down at the bottom. And we'll use some of those coming up. One of the benefits of doing an adjustment this way is that you can make, literally, you could make all of these different layers. So I almost want you to like just make a ton of these things so you can see what they do and also see that you can see how they affect the layer panel. It makes a new layer with a free layer mask for everyone. Now, if I don't want any of that, because it's a little crazy, I can go back up in my history and just keep the one I like. 
You don't need a curves and a levels. If you need a curves and a levels, you're not pushing one of those adjustment layers all the way. Okay, so any questions about what an adjustment layer does or how it's different, this, this is um, a global adjustment, meaning it's affecting everything below it, and it's also a non-destructive adjustment. Let me show you what I mean by that. A lot of people, you know, some, some people may say, okay, just grab this background copy and go up to image, adjustments, levels, and then you just kind of do your thing here. Well, what if I'm going on and I don't like that, right? Can I change that once I keep going? No. No. It is stuck to that layer. Now, because I am the, I am the queen of non-commitment, I've kind of backed myself up a little bit by having it there too. But once I start working, I say don't do any of those adjustments um, on the background or the background copy. Just make a, a adjustment layers. That's what they're there for. You can turn them on and off. You can change the opacity. You can change the blending mode. Wait until we get into the stuff you can do with these. You can mask them so you can hide and reveal parts of them. They're really the most intuitive and probably the most efficient way to work. Okay? All right, so let's get started with that.